I've said before that love is so expansive that any attempt to define it merely places limitations upon it because it's really something which is beyond even the limitations of conceptualization. It's not something to be understood merely by the intellect, but something to be experienced in awareness. And all too often we try to define it in very narrow and limiting terms. Because of this, we wind up with all kinds of misconceptions, all kinds of illusions concerning love. And I've often found that in order to understand what love means and to remove the barriers that stand in the way of it, we have to begin by dismantling these illusions and misconceptions. The way that most of us express and experience love is extremely limited, unsatisfying, and even painful at times. And this is due to our illusions, due to our very limited understanding of love, due to our many misconceptions of what love actually is. But then we hear of a kind of love which is unlimited, unconditional, that is at the heart of many spiritual teachings. We're told that we should love everyone, including our enemies, and we find this idea extremely challenging because it seems so contrary to what we experience as love, to how we have come to understand and express love, because it challenges the very limitations that we have placed upon this word. If we think of love merely as a form of affection, or the desire to be close to someone, then naturally we find it impossible to imagine feeling love for someone who is antagonistic or hateful. How could we ever love such a person? But love in the spiritual sense is far greater than the kind of romantic or familial love that we typically experience. It's not limited to physical closeness. You can love someone from a great distance without ever being close. You don't have to be anywhere near that person. You don't have to have any kind of contact at all because the love that we're talking about here has nothing at all to do with the physical situation. It goes far beyond that. To define something is to confine it. So I want to be very careful not to restrict love to a definition. For one thing, there is so much that can be said about it that a simple definition would never do it justice. But secondly, when we define something in words, we're creating a concept, an intellectual idea, which is not the same as the reality. And often people get trapped in concepts. But to truly understand something like love, it has to be experienced. And in my own experience, I would say that love is essentially the recognition of our connection to one another, to all living beings and to life itself. I would say that it's a recognition of that intrinsic underlying connection that we all share. It's essentially seeing oneself in the other and the other in oneself, seeing that ultimately there is no separation, that we're all intrinsically one and the same. And to be clear, I'm not saying that love means to establish or create or to cultivate a connection with another, but to recognize the underlying connection that is already there, that has always been there, and which always will be. And this is not something that is only in relation to those who we're in direct relationship with. It extends to all of existence because we are intrinsically connected to the whole of existence. What we are at the very core of our being is the same in essence as that which is at the core of everything else. And that essence itself we might call love. So love is not something limited by direct personal relationship or limited by affectionate expression and so on. It's beyond all of these limitations. And the reality is that we're in relationship with everyone and everything to some degree. It may not appear to be that way to us from our limited perspective. It may seem that we're very much separated and isolated from the rest of the world. But the reality is that our relationship extends far beyond our immediate circles. Whatever relationship we have with someone, they in turn have some relationship with someone else. And that continues to extend outward from person to person, stretching on indefinitely. 
And so our interactions with just one person can ripple out and influence all of humanity. And unfortunately, so much of what we say and do is said and done in the absence of love, in the absence of the understanding that we are all intricately connected. And it often begins with our most immediate relationships. Even our romantic relationships are often devoid of genuine love. Most people don't genuinely love one another. They're just attached or they're just trying to get something from the other, to feel appreciated, validated, to feel wanted, to feel loved. But it's all about them with little consideration for the other. And so we may behave selfishly with insensitivity or even aggressively, not realizing that this is carried from person to person, much like a virus. It doesn't just affect the person you're interacting with, it spreads throughout the family, throughout the community, throughout the nation, and on and on until the entire world is affected. We don't tend to realize the power that we have in how we interact with others and the influence it has upon the entire world. So it's very important to recognize this connectedness and not just have some intellectual understanding of it, a conceptualization, a mere belief but to realize and experience it, to embody it, and to understand that whatever energy we put out into the world, it doesn't just ripple out into the far reaches of the universe gradually dissipating, it comes right back around, it returns to us. So what we sow, we also reap. But to really understand all of this, it has to be experienced. And most of us do have some experience of this. We've all had moments where we've had some intuitive awareness of this connectedness. And this experience is what we commonly refer to as empathy, to have a sense of what other beings are feeling and experiencing, and to have compassion for them. And this may be in regard to a total stranger, someone who you don't even know, someone who you have no investment in, someone who is not in the position to repay you for your kindness. You might simply be walking down the street one day and you see a person who is homeless sitting on the ground and naturally you feel compelled to reach out and help them in some way, to offer them some money or something to eat. And it's not necessarily a calculated decision. It's not a sense of obligation. It's not something which is required of you. There's no rational, logical reasoning behind it. It just arises in you spontaneously without explanation. But where this is actually arising from is from that intuitive sense of connectedness, that this other person, this stranger, is somehow connected to us in some way. And when we act upon that sense of connectedness without even having to rationalize it, what we're essentially doing is expressing love, that universal, unconditional love. Now, of course, depending on how we were raised by our parents, by society and so on, that intuitive sense of connectedness can become obscured in us, covered over and buried. And this is why it seems that so many people are insensitive to the needs of others. Due to their conditioning, they have been desensitized. They have been trained to resist their natural impulse, to be kind to others, to reach out and assist one another, which is very unfortunate. But if you observe children who are still very young and innocent, who have not yet been corrupted and conditioned, for them, it's a very natural thing to be compassionate toward others, including strangers, including animals, and so on. They don't seem to differentiate, they don't discriminate, they don't make exceptions. They treat everyone with the same kindness. But as we grow up, we're taught that only some people deserve compassion and other people don't or we're taught to hate certain people for whatever ridiculous reasons, or we're taught to suppress our natural impulse to empathize, to feel that innate love and compassion. Often this is done through some kind of rationalization, 
but empathy itself is entirely irrational. It can't be made sense of by the intellect because it arises from a place within us much deeper than the mind. But the mind, through rationalization, discrimination, conceptualization, and so on, becomes a filter so that what we experience as love has to pass through that filter and it becomes extremely limited. We only allow it to be expressed under very specific circumstances, according to very specific conditions. But if we can clear that filter or remove it entirely, then love can flow freely, uninhibited, unobstructed. And this is what is meant by unconditional love. It has no conditions. It has no preferences. It's not selective. It doesn't get withheld. Now, as I mentioned, we're talking about something which arises from deep within us. That this sense of connectedness is at the core of our being. So if we really want to tap into that in order to fully experience it, then we need to turn our attention within. All too often, our idea of love is that it's something missing in us and we have to go out into the world and find it there. That we have to acquire it from someone. And this is why most relationships are ultimately unsatisfying or why they deteriorate, why they become full of resentment and tension and conflict. This is why there's so much emphasis on self-love because what we're trying to get from others is already available within us. We've just been misdirecting our attention. And it isn't until we remove the blockages within ourselves, allowing that love to arise and flow forth that we can truly love one another. Until then, we're all just trying to get love. We're all starved for love and begging from one another. And so we have to go deep within and discover it there within us. And what we're really talking about here is the essence of who we are, that essential nature that is at the core of every living being. And so to connect to that within ourselves, we connect to the whole of existence or rather we uncover that connection because as I said before, it's not something that has to be established. It just has to be uncovered. So again, this is why in spirituality, there's so much emphasis on self inquiry and self love and so on, because who we are at the core of our being is the same in essence as everyone else. But as I also said, it's not enough to have some whimsical idea, some conceptual belief that we are all connected to one another. You have to actually experience it, not just merely believe it, because it's the experience of it that allows it to fully manifest. Otherwise, it's still being inhibited in some way. And you can try to force it, but it doesn't really work that way. You can try to love everyone, including your enemies, because that's what is commanded of you by your priest or your guru or your scriptures and so on. But it won't be authentic and it won't be complete. It will be extremely challenging. And you will find that oftentimes it simply can't be done because you're just trying to impose some rule onto your behavior. It's not coming from deep within you. It's coming from outside of you. But those who are attuned to that love within themselves have no need for rules and obligations and so on. They don't have to be told to love everyone or how to love and so on. It just arises naturally and effortlessly from that intrinsic connection. The more we understand our own intrinsic nature, the more we understand others. And from that level of understanding, we can have acceptance and compassion patience and forgiveness for others. In fact, the more acceptance and compassion there is for oneself, the more acceptance and compassion we have for others naturally and effortlessly. But you cannot have true compassion for others without first having compassion for yourself. You cannot truly forgive others unless you have learned to forgive yourself. And you cannot truly and deeply love another until you have come to discover this love within yourself. So go within and discover this for yourself. Recognize what is standing in the way of it and resolve those illusions, those filters, those obstructions. Allow that love to be awakened in you. 
clear the way for it to rise up and flow through you, to fill you and to overflow into the world. And when you do, you will know what love is beyond all beliefs and concepts and definitions. And you will have no desperate need to acquire it from any place outside of yourself because you will realize that this love is the very essence of who you are. If you find value in this content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.